our next session and the last uh, session for the day is uh, by Rami Ismail uh, on PR tips, the rock star of the indie community. Oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Rami Ismail. Um, I'm going to be talking about PR. Before I talk about PR, I'm going to talk a bit about Vlambeer. Uh, who of you here do not know what Vlambeer is? Just raise your hand real quick. Okay, that's enough people to do a quick introduction. So, Vlambeer is an independent studio uh, from the Netherlands. We create uh, video games, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, this is me. I drink a lot of Coca-Cola. Uh, I do the business and development at Plan Beer, which means that I program games, and then on top of that, I do the business. So I do everything related to business, which is uh, quite a lot. Then the other person at Plan Beer, because Plan Beer is only two people, is uh, JW. Um, his real name is Jan Willem, but nobody knows how to pronounce that, so we just call him JW because people do know how to pronounce that. Uh, JW draws a lot of uh, doodles and is the designer at Flambeer, so he comes up with the ideas and then together we make games, sell them, and then continue doing that. Um, and in the past few years we've made quite a few games. Um, if we count them, uh, all of them, we made 19 games in four years. Um, the best known ones are Super Crate Box, Ridiculous Fishing, Lift Trousers, uh, Gun Gods, and Nuclear Throne. Uh, but beyond that, there's also things like uh, Dinosaur Zookeeper and Serious Sam Random Encounter and a bunch of other games. So we've been pretty busy. Um, but it all started with this game. And this game, when I first saw it, was called Crates from Hell. Um, and JW had been working on it for a while, and it was a pretty, pretty terrible game. Like, I'll be honest, like, JW was pretty bad at making video games. Um, but there was something here. There was something really interesting here. Me and JW, we had both begun making games when we were young. I started when I was six. We got our first computer, and the only way to play video games on that computer was to open a programming language and then run the game, run the code. So I was introduced to code really, really young, and I started changing the code, and then I broke the game, so I'd go crying to my dad, and my dad would get a new copy of the game. And then we'd do that like over and over again. I'd break it, cry, he'd bring a new copy. JW started when he was 14. Um, and when he was uh, 14, he got a magazine, and in the magazine was something called Game Maker. Um, he booted that up, and it turned out it was way too hard for him, so he quit again. Uh, and then about a year later, he opened it up again, and there was this demo where you had to race a car, and you could go left, you could go right, and you could press the klaxon. Um, and JW didn't know how to make video games, so what he did is he took the sound for the klaxon and replaced it with the sound of a cow. So every time you'd hit the klaxon, you'd hear a cow. And that was all he did. Um, and he thought that was so interesting that he kept making video games. So we grew up, we grew older, and then eventually we needed to do something with our life, right? Uh, and we had like this amazing array of things we could do. We could become a lawyer, or an engineer, or a doctor, or a scientist, or any of those things. My dad really wanted me to be an engineer. Um, and I wanted to make video games. So I went to school for game development. And um, somewhere in the third month that I was at the school, I was in the train. In the Netherlands, we take the train to school. Um, I was in the train to school, and I was talking about this game that I'd been working on. And I'd been working on this game for a year and a half, and it was a big commercial game, and we were going to sell it. Um, and on the other side of the aisle was this guy with a hoodie, uh, and he was just sitting there. This is like 8 a.m. in the morning, right? Um, so I was talking about this game to my friends, and then suddenly uh, the guy with the hoodie takes off his hoodie and says, okay, please shut up. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. I don't want to talk about fucking video games. That was JW, and that is how we met. Uh, that is literally the first thing JW ever told me. Uh, so we didn't like each other. And uh, to be honest, we still don't like each other. Um, but there was one thing we hated more than each other. That was our school. So we did a really stupid thing. We decided to quit school. Um, and we quit school because of this game. And this game was called Crates from Hell. Um, and we were going to make this game into a commercial game, and we were going to get famous or something. We don't know what the plan was. It was completely ridiculous. This was our big plan. Is we're going to make a game about shooting things, and that'll be the best game ever. So um, we dropped out of school. and. Um, we became really successful or something. 
Uh, we ate these noodles. Uh, it's like three for one euro. Uh, it was the only thing we could really afford. Uh, they came in three flavors, duck, chicken, and beef. Uh, and the beef and chicken ones are terrible. Uh, but the um, duck one was actually really good. So if you're ever poor enough that you can only buy ramen noodles, buy duck ones, okay? This is an important tip. Um, and, you know, we made lots of money, or at least enough to buy lots of Coca-Cola for me. And with this Coca-Cola and with the noodles, we worked for four, six months, actually, six months. And in those six months, uh, we had to make money, so we made a game about shooting fish. Because shooting fish sounded like a really reasonable thing to do. Um, so we made a game about shooting fish with machine guns. And that game was called Radical Fishing, and it earned us exactly $10,001. If you want to know about why the $1 is there, please ask me at the end of the presentation, because I don't have time to explain that right now. Uh, but we took the money that we made with this game, and we turned this into this. And this was Super Crate Box. Um, a lot of you that I've spoken to here know Super Crate Box, which is awesome. Uh, thank you. That's amazing. Uh, and we released this game for free. And it did really, really well. Like, we didn't make any money, so we still had to eat noodles. But everybody was talking about Super Crate Box. And uh, that meant that suddenly we were getting flown out to, like, events. And we were getting flown, like, we were flying to, like, San Francisco for the Independent Games Festival Award. And, like, all these fancy big things that we could only dream of. Like, these are big things, right? Um, turns out that at fancy award ceremonies, when you get food, they give you very little food because that's chic. So we were still hungry. but. You know, we were making games and people started to know about us. And um, we stayed pretty humble. And then we started making more games about gangster rap uh, on Venus, because why not? And people suddenly started to want to hear us talk about things, which, cool. Uh, and then we made more games about shooting things, because we are very good at making games about shooting things. Uh, this is called Serious Sam the Random Encounter. So we started going to conferences, and suddenly I had t-shirts with our own logo on it, which is awesome. Like this, just the fact that I'm wearing this t-shirt is amazing to me. Um, and then we decided we'd make a big game. This was going to be our first big game. And this first big game was going to be an iOS version of the game about fishing with machine guns. And we called it Ridiculous Fishing. So we got a super cool team together, a bunch of people from New York and Chicago, uh, me and JW, and a musician from Norway. We just emailed them, like, do you want to help on, our, on this game? Uh, we start working on it. We worked on it for six months. And then a company in San Francisco decided to steal our idea and then release the game. Um, that game was called Ninja Fishing. And it was a total ripoff of our game. Uh, they made about a million dollars in the first month or so. Um, so screw them. Uh, anyway, that was um, depressing. Like, that was really sad. You work on all this stuff. You build up, like, people in the press. You build up, like, fans. And then you have this one big game that everything is riding on, and another company steals it. Makes a lot of money, gets good reviews. Everybody thinks it's their idea. Now we're stuck with a half-finished game that, when we release it, everybody's going to think we stole it from them. It's pretty awful. So we decided, you know what? We're not going to let this happen. What we're going to do is we're going to go to, like, the New York Times. And like all the press. We're going to go to every single person in the press. We're going to talk about this, because this is not OK. We went to every single press, every single member of the press. We went to every single event. We submitted talks everywhere. And suddenly, everybody was talking about how Ridiculous Fishing got cloned and how that is not OK. And that was a really rough period, because like, it sounds kind of cool talking to the New York Times, but you kind of have to imagine. My life at that point looked like this. I wake up in the morning. Then I read my email, and I respond to the emails that ask me, can you tell me once more about that time somebody stole a million dollars from you? And then the next day, I'd wake up, and there'd be more emails. And people would be, can you please tell me about that time somebody stole one million dollars from you? And that was all of my life. I just told people how bad I felt. And that was it. Like I didn't have the motivation to work on games. I didn't have the motivation to create or anything. I just had to answer questions about, hey, remember that time somebody screwed you over? Yeah, can you tell me about that? That's a cool story. So it took us a long time to get back into making games. But eventually, we did. And we started working on this game, which is Lufthrausers. And it's a very angry game, which is cool, because we were very angry. So making a very angry game was a really good way of getting rid of all that anger. So I made a game about shooting, because we're Um 
And then as we went and as we started getting more energy and more motivation, we finished Ridiculous Fishing, which you see on the left and on the right is Lift Trousers. This is right before uh, both games launched. And Ridiculous Fishing did kind of well. Uh, it won Game of the Year on Apple. It won an Apple Design Award. It was the highest rated premium game of the year. Uh, it's by many people um, considered the best iOS game ever released, which is wow. 